It was a day of reckoning for Janet Scott's family and for her children and husband. It's been a long time coming. I've been stuck in limbo for the last three years. I've been... I can't move on. I've lost everything. I've lost not only my wife, I've lost my best friend. I've lost everything. Janet Scott was murdered in 2018 by Simon Mullers, her former boyfriend. But it wasn't the first time he'd killed. In 1999, he murdered his then partner, Pearl Black. He was jailed for life, but released on license in 2014. Three years later, he met Janet in a pub and they started a relationship. But when she ended it to return to her estranged husband, he wouldn't accept it was over. Days before she was killed, Janet Scott contacted Simon Mellor's probation officer. She told him Mellor's had been following her. But the probation officer didn't recognise the behaviour as stalking. Asked by the coroner why he hadn't contacted the police, Andrew Victor said, at that time, my assessment was of someone who's done a lot of work in custody. His compliance has always been perfect. He blamed his workload, telling the inquest he was drained and overwhelmed. A few days later, Mellors drove to Janet's home and stabbed her twice in the chest. He then forced her into his car and drove towards Nottingham city centre. Janet managed to escape from the car and ran over here to a council worker. But as he tried to help, Mellors drove his car at both of them. Janet was killed and the council worker seriously injured. Mellors was later arrested, but he killed himself in prison before the case got to court. The probation officer that was supervising Mellors didn't do his job right. He was too, in my eyes, more of a mate Mellors controlled him. That view was echoed by the coroner. In a damning summing up, he said missed safeguarding opportunities by the probation service had a significant contribution to Janet Scott's death. We will absolutely learn from the findings of the coroner. Indeed, we've already taken action in response to our own internal inquiries. So I would want to give Janet Scott's family absolute assurance that we will learn and make changes where necessary. Staff numbers have been increased and training overhauled, but Janet Scott's daughter says that doesn't go far enough. There's no justice. He's dead. We're never going to see anything from that. Yeah, his offender manager is still a, an offender manager. The probation service is still a probation service. What would reassure you in terms of feeling there had been justice? To lower the amount of people that are going through this, the amount of families that are completely devastated by loss from a previous offending criminal. Janet Scott's children say they now intend to take legal action against the probation service. For them, their day of reckoning is still to come. Well, with me now is the Domestic Abuse Commissioner for England and Wales, Nicole Jacobs. Um, Nicole Jacobs, first and foremost, this is an incredible tragedy for Janet Scott and her family, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Janet Scott and also Pearl Black lost their lives to a, a known perpetrator whose risks simply weren't managed. Uh, the Domestic Homicide Review, which came before this into the same um, these same murders showed that um, that Simon Miller's had relationships with other women which were known to probation too. So it's not just these two people who who were put at risk. It were many other. It were many other. Um, there were many other instances where um, Simon Miller's was both not held to account and his risk to others were ignored or minimised. I mean, it is such a familiar story, isn't it? That you know that trite phrase, "lessons must be learned," but so often they don't seem to be being learned. That's right. And, you know, ironically, the inspectorate of probation around the time of Janet Scott's murder um, came out with a report about improvements that needed to be made by probation in relation to domestic abuse. And there was an there's an action plan and there is a domestic abuse pathway which does address some of these um, concerns. But like Janet's daughter said on your piece and her sister, Sue Thompson, has said, 
um, which I wholly agree with. It's all in the implementation. We have to, um, in so many ways, get beyond the best practice that's set out in relation to domestic abuse and make sure that it's actually implemented. And that's why I'm calling for this oversight mechanism in the domestic abuse bill to make sure that we can get that done. In this case, one of the really terrible details, this idea that the probation officer didn't recognise Mella's behaviour as stalking. We have talked so much about stalking now and how dangerous it is and can be. How surprised are you that this was the case? Well, unfortunately, I'm not surprised because um, I think people often don't recognize, even people in frontline um, uh, services don't recognize the overlap between domestic abuse and stalking. So stalking very often, about 50% of the time is done by a uh, current former partner um, of the victim. And in this case, very particularly, what wasn't recognized was that separation. So we know most of our domestic homicides happen within the first few months of separation. And that's exactly what Janet Scott had done. She had um, ended the relationship with Simon Mellers, and then within a month, um, she was killed by him. So that, that risk period, time and time again in domestic homicide reviews, we see this where we're not um, helping and supporting victims and giving them really good solid advice at that really critical time. And, and people who are in positions like probation aren't thinking of the risk to others. So they have to be more proactive and much more assertive exactly. um, in the way they act during that Just time. Just very briefly on that point, there may be individual error here, but is there also still a wider question about attitudes towards domestic violence that it is still not being taken seriously enough? That's right. And one of the most fundamental um, threads through all of these reviews, corners, inquests, um, uh, you know, coroner's reports is this lack of recognition of domestic abuse. So we must have greater oversight in how we carry out these recommendations, ensuring these actions are followed through. And the best way we can do that in front of us is the domestic abuse bill and really amending it so that we can have oversight for these findings and real accountability that these families deserve. Nicole Jacobs, thanks very much for talking to us. Thank you.